Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Bhaskar Napte and today we are going to talk about why do you get negative peaks in SPLC using a UV detector. I mean one can understand the presence of negative peak in case using a refractive index detector. But the negative peaks are not really considered as a good chromatographic condition in case if they getting observed in the UV detector technique. So let us understand you know what is the origin of this negative peak and this is three important points that we are going to discuss today. The first one is UV absorption. So when your compound can get the UV absorptivity in case if the compound containing the chromophores and these are the few examples of the chromophore groups like nitro, nitroso, azo, carbonyl, hydroxy, nitrile or in case if there is a presence of pi bond in conjugation your compound can give the absorbance for the UV range for example from 200 nanometer to 400 nanometer. The HPLC solvents or reagents containing chromophore can also yield the UV response and that is something going to become the uh, the point of worry because your intention is not get the response from the diluent that you are going to use. The third important point is response is higher at the shorter wavelength example 200 nanometer for the longer wavelength like for 300 or 400 nanometer your response is minimum but for the shorter wavelength the response is going to increase why because the shorter wavelength light carries the higher energy and hence can have the excitation of electrons from crown state to excited state very easily yields into a higher response the fourth point is very important as per as you know the choice of the organic solvent during HPLC analysis is concerned and that is called as the UV cutoff. So what is meant by UV cutoff? So the UV cutoff is a wavelength below which the response is found to be more than 0 0.05 AU. So as I said in the point number 4 the shorter the wavelength the higher is the response. So what is the lowest possible wavelength? you know at which your response is less than 0 0.05 AU that can be considered as a suitable wavelength. Hmm? So let us understand the UV cutoff values for the sum of the very commonly used organic solvents. So the UV cutoff value for acetonitrile is 190 nanometer that means that the acetonitrile can be used you know from 190 nanometers onwards. Methanol has the UV cutoff value of 205 nanometer. That means methanol can be used from the wavelength of 205 and greater. Isopropyl alcohol can be used from the 220 nanometer and the higher wavelength. THF tetrahydrofuron has the UV cutoff value of 212 nanometer. So this is the point number one. I am just trying to build the background to understand you know from where the absorptivity comes in. Now the second point is very important in understanding the negative peak phenomenon and that is called as the zeroing. So what is mean by zeroing in case of HPLC? I mean in case if you are using the UV spectrophotometer you must have seen the analyst doing ato zero. Hmm? You are going to put the diluent and then makes the whatever absorbance value coming onto your screen to its zero that is called as the ato zero. Now the same thing is also applicable in case if you are performing the HPLC analysis. So let us understand the definition of zeroing. So signal value detector takes at the start of the analysis and makes it to zero is actually called as the zeroing. It is also can be called as ato zero or t zero. So let us take an example so that we can understand very easily. The initial signal value I mean in case if you inject this solution and then your detector will read some absorbance value. So if that initial signal value is 0 0.004 AU 
then your detector is going to assume that point 0.004 AU is equal to 0 and your baseline will drop to a 0. So always if you look at your chromatogram, your chromatogram must and should start with the response of exactly equal to 0. That is why because your HPLC system is doing the zeroing at the beginning of your chromatographic run. <clears throat> the second important point is the signal of analyte will then get subtracted from the zero ink value. So let us understand this phenomenon with the help of very simple example. And in this example, let us assume that your initial signal value hmm, at the start of analysis is 0 0.004. So this initial signal value is always because of the mobile phase flowing through your detector. The analyte signal value without subtraction is 0 0.04 AU. Assume that you are not applying the zeroing principle. In that case, you will find the value of your analyte equal to 0 0.04 absorbance unit. So the corrected response hmm, will be 0 0.04 minus 0 0.004 equal to 0 0.036 AU. So this is the way the HPLC also measure the response of your analyte after correcting the value for its initial absorbance value. So I hope you understand what is meant by zeroing. The third important point is now why the UV detector gives the negative peak and I am going to walk you through the 10 important points and let us understand one by one. The first one is the sample diluent with different UV absorptivity with respect to mobile phase can give negative or positive peaks. I mean, this is very fundamental, right? Why we are getting positive peak or negative peak? Because the sample constituent or the sample diluent is having a different UV absorptivity as compared to your mobile phase absorbance value. So there can be two different scenarios now. So let me explain you with the example. So sample component with high UV absorptivity as compared to its initial mobile phase or zeroing diluent will give positive peak, hmm? will give the positive peak. So let me show you with the help of example now in this case and sure it is. The first one is, let us say the mobile phase is your ACN and water with the mixture of 50-50 and the sample diluent is IPA and water with the 50-50 as a mixture. Zero response from mobile phase is 0 0.004 angstrom unit. So when you injected the sample solution, the initial response will get zeroed to the response received from the mobile phase and it is found to be how much 0 0.004 AU. The response from sample diluent hmm, is 0 0.02 AU. So what is going to be the peak response now? It is going to be a 0 0.02 minus 0 0.04. So in this case I have assumed that the response from sample diluent is not corrected for the uh, your mobile phase response. Hmm? So the, you will get the 0 0.02 minus 0 0.04 uh, or not 0 0.04 but minus 0 0.004 which is plus 0 0.016 absorbance unit. As it is positive deviation your sample is going to have a response. Hmm? Your analyte or your whatever response detector is giving will be a positive response. I have just given the you know the representative chromatograms to just understand how the peak can be seen as a positive response in the given example. Let us understand the second scenario now. The sample component with low UV absorptivity as compared to initial mobile phase or zeroing diluent will give the negative peak. So let us understand with the help of example and here it is. So mobile phase is IPA water 50-50, sample diluent is ACN water 50-50 and in this case 
as we know that the mobile phase consists of ipa which is having the greater absorptivity hmm? so what is going to happen now so zero the response from mobile phase is 0.02 au hmm? and the response from diluent is 0.004 au can you see the response difference between the ipa and acl because mobile phase contain ipa and because of that the mobile phase has given the response which is higher than your diluent so what is going to be the response for the uh, diluent it is the 0 0.004 minus 0 0.02 hmm? which will come minus 0 0.016 au and as it is minus you can easily understand that the response will be a negative and you can see into the representative chromatograms over here we got the negative peak why because our mobile phase response is higher as compared to the response of the diluent now this phenomenon is also known as the vacancy peak effect this phenomenon is also known as the vacancy peak effect and what is the scenario here the mobile phase is having greater absorptivity as compared to your sample constituent or the diluent i hope you understand the vacancy peak effect the second point that can lead to negative peak is the drop in pressure during injection can also lead to a negative peak hmm? can also lead to a negative peak and let me show you with the help of you know the simple uh, example so drop in pressure during injection can lead to negative peak followed by positive peak due to a diluent having higher uv absorptivity so have you seen this kind of the uh, chromatographic nature during the void volume hmm? so this negative peak is because of what the negative peak is because of your drop in the pressure during the injection hmm? and this positive peak the followed by this positive peak why because your sample constituent is having higher absorptivity as compared to your mobile phase the second scenario can be now again the drop in pressure during injection can lead to a negative peak followed by one more negative peak due to a diluent having a lower absorptivity so have you seen this kind of chromatographic pattern during your hplc analysis hmm? the two negative peaks the first negative peak can be because of the drop in pressure due to injection and the second negative peak is again why because your mobile phase is having greater absorptivity as compared to your sample constituent yeah this is called as the vacancy peak effect i hope you remember the point of discussion the third important point which can lead to the negative peak is why the gradient composition with higher uv absorptivity can give positive peak or positive drift in case if you are running a gradient if you are running a gradient uh, illusion then in case if you are changing the proportion of mobile phase which increases the absorptivity as compared to its initial absorptivity then you are going to see a drip on to the positive side and you can also experience the positive peaks as you can see in the chromatogram over here similarly the gradient composition with lower absorptivity can give a negative peak or a negative drip so let me show you with the same example again so can you see a drip towards the negative side why because now the change in the composition of gradient is having the lower absorptivity as compared to your initial composition of the gradient and because of this lower absorptivity now you started seeing the peak uh, baseline drifting towards the negative side the fourth the fifth important point is sample matrix or impurities can also lead to positive or negative peaks you may be finding the negative peaks because of the sample matrix which is having the lower absorptivity as compared to your mobile phase diluents or reagents impurities can also lead to positive or negative peak and that is the reason you must prefer to use the suitable grade of reagents and the chemicals 
if you want to use the uh, SPLC grade chemicals or reagent, you must use that because they are the most preferred in case of you are running the SPLC analysis. Pressure fluctuations can also lead to the positive or negative response or you can see the noisy baseline or the wavy baseline. Health of column can be a reason for positive or negative peaks. So if there are certain components which are entrapped inside the column, hmm, if they are giving the lower UV absorptivity, you can see the negative peaks upon their elution out of the column. If the, the compound which are entrapped inside the column having the higher absorptivity as compared to your mobile phase, then they will give the positive peaks. So that is the reason why your column health is also important. The contaminated tubings and detector can also lead to positive or negative peak. Similarly, the pH of diluent hmm, different than mobile phase can lead to positive or negative peak. So in case if your diluent pH is different from your mobile phase pH. And in case if your diluent pH decreases the uh, absorptivity of your sample constituent, then you will see the negative peaks coming out of your chromatographic run. Or in case if your sample uh, diluent pH increases the absorptivity of your sample constituent, then you will see the uh, uh, positive peak coming out of your chromatographic run. So these are the important points I thought of sharing with you today. Yeah, and I hope that this entire presentation hmm, will help you in understanding how the negative peaks can be observed using UV detector during your chromatographic run. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of useful and informative videos. Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.